Hello, everyone. Welcome to VR Verdict, episode number 99. Damn. I'm PJ. I'm Wookie. I am the Baron from Blade and Sorcery. <laughs> it's nice to have you, man. Um, I really thank you for the short notice that actually we we're kind of talking, and the guest yeah. that was supposed to come on backed out, and you're like, I can do it. So it was awesome. Yep. <laughs> Brilliant. No, it just it worked, out, it worked out fantastic. Yeah. So... For those who don't know, you are the community manager and producer of Blade and Sorcery. Yes, that is and, correct. Um, you guys just launched Blade and Sorcery Nomad on Quest. How is how is launch going with that? It's uh, yeah. So we just launched about a week ago. It's going absolutely brilliant. Um, awesome. But it's madness. It's <laughs> it's pure madness. Like just the volume of new players we have going. Uh, you know the volume of uh, you know, new tech support, you know, that, that I'm running at the moment. Uh, and then just, uh, just like a lot of, just, just a lot of stuff, basically. So yeah. it's been really fantastic. We're completely blessed, uh, but busy, busy as hell. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I'm on like hour 15, I think, right now of my work. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah, it's been a long oh. old day. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, so, people calling in me blades don't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the blades, but I don't get the sorcery. <laughs> Sometimes that's an actual thing. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a dud. Cast a fireball. Yeah. <laughs> dud. I think the, the biggest question I think is on everyone's mind is how the hell did you get this on the running on the quest? Because yeah. PC version is great. It works really well. The quest is the quest. The mobile process. Like, what? What? What did you guys it's, do? It, that that screenshot right there in the bottom right for the people that can't that are listening yeah. in. It's like Skyrim Castle Town stuff. How does <laughs> yeah. that fit on there? I have the quest one. Would that make my face melt? <laughs> so, like so I should just know it's uh, not officially supported on the quest one. Oh. However, there are people out there saying that they've gotten it side loaded. Uh, nice. But you know, like that's that's your own business if you do that. <laughs> You're definitely not running tech support for Quest One. So yeah, how it happened on Quest? Completely crazy because uh, for three years we're telling people, you know, forget about it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and then suddenly we announced it and then released it straight away. So um, how it all happened was basically we tried it with the Quest One, and it was truly impossible. It, it just it just couldn't uh, it just couldn't be managed. And um, without watering it down super, uh, just to the point that it's basically not even blade and source anymore, you know? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that, so that was why we were so sure that it wasn't going to happen. But what kind of opened doors was we had an update about a year ago, update eight, and it was not good. <laughs> it was, it was a huge <laughs> overhaul of the game, uh, and it introduced like a lot of new stuff, a lot of new graphics and stuff like that. And, uh, it had major performance problems. Uh, so it, we found that the 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 lag spikes that were happening were happening uh, when the characters were spawning, and so the the issue was basically in the character system. So that led to this big six month redo of the character mm. system. It was a huge, huge pain. However, it was worth doing because when we got to the other side of it, we had the eight point four beta, which turned into update nine. Uh, when we got to the other side of it. It was very much worth doing. Like it was a big, big, big performance boost, and it was very well received by all the the fans and stuff like that. So when we were doing that, you know, it was it was so effective. That was kind of when the little seed was first. Like, hey, you know, this is uh, <laughs> maybe there's, maybe there's something here. You know, this is actually working pretty good. So we went back and looked at the the quest, and as I say, couldn't be done. But then we kind of thought, well, what if we just abandon quest one and just focus on quest two, which is you know, significantly better. Now, um, does Oculus allow that? Because some developers have said they kind of don't like that, but smart I, games are well, starting to do it. I, right. Well, I couldn't, I, I would imagine they don't like it, but, but we, you know, we did it anyway. <clears throat> and I, you <laughs> know, you they, I mean, they were, they were super happy, you know, to, to get a Quest version, period. You know, uh, so 
Um, so that was kind of where it came from. And then the last little, uh, we, so we did the test and the question was like, okay, this is going to work. But obviously, there's some differences. The graphics are going to be significantly less. So then the last little piece of the puzzle was, you know, how do we do this in the quest without hurting the PC? Because that was very important to us, you know. And um, in the end, you know, after much uh, going through kind of like the, the roadmap and, and seeing was this possible, we decided, what if we split it as a sister game? And so therefore, um, the PC title will be completely untouched. Roadmap doesn't change. Um, but obviously, um, you know, sucks for us because then we have to d develop two games in parallel. Mm -hmm. But we also kind of looked into that and made sure, hey, is this possible? Is this going to hurt the roadmap? Is this going to hurt the dev time? And when we were able to piece all that together, that's how it became. So it was like, okay, we can do it. But this is the rules. It's going to be Quest 2. It's going to not touch the PC in any shape or form. Um, and that's how, it, that's how it came to be. Nice. So and was... um, yeah, I was curious it's... when with like when you're doing that and you know there's cross by cross play options and all that. I'm assuming since you had to pretty much make a whole new team and do that, that's right. It is kind of like its own game, so I'm assuming yeah, that's why exactly you do those. Yeah, things. so we we don't we don't. That was like one of the things we talked about, which was, do you know what I mean? Like if if a game worked on Quest and PC, then typically the player gets the benefit of both. That's cool. Uh, but this was this would be a problem for us because it was going to be a separate title, so we couldn't do, uh, you know, cross uh, play or cross buy like that. You know, we were kind of worried it might be an issue, but it's, it really actually wasn't. You know, actually everybody's been super duper cool. Uh, like, I would say ninety nine percent of people I've interacted with totally recognize. You know what? I see what you did here. This is why it's a sister game. This is, and actually most people are really happy. Uh, we didn't crush it all into the Oculus game or the Quest game, you know, <laughs> that we did split the titles. So I'm really glad because we put a huge amount of thought into that and it was a bunch of work. So I'm like really, really happy that uh, that's how fans are uh, receiving it. Yeah. And I think if you're open and honest, people understand it and accept it. And be yeah, very well, much. In, in terms of like remakes and stuff, like I bought the Mass Effect remake and I was happy to pay because it's a lot of work. I mean, it's not the best thing and mm. there were some bugs, but it's a lot of yeah. work. And like the GTA trilogy remake, a lot of when are you just going to do that for nothing? Like on the weekends? Yeah. Like, come on, you know, that sucks. Yeah, um, our, 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 our charity on it was like, you should see, you know, my Twitter is just, <laughs> you know, if you open my Twitter <laughs> inbox, it's just, you know, 20 messages a day. Is this come to Quest? Is this come to Quest? Is this come to Quest? And PC, uh, sorry, PlayStation 2. Is this come to PlayStation? Uh, so, we, you know, I've been getting those messages for years. And so, you know, we knew, there was, we knew there was an audience there who they just don't have the PC, but they're dying to play the game. Yeah. Uh, so our theory was, you know, if you have it on PC and you're playing it, uh, well, then you're Grant. You know, all, all is well. You have the, uh, the higher, you know, fidelity version. Uh, it has more options for, like, physics and stuff like that, you know. Uh, that's brilliant. But if you're one of these people who doesn't have a PC, you literally just have the headset, well, then, you know, you're not going to get the PC version. You'll be glad to get the Quest version. So yeah. we kind of figured it would work out nice, and it kind of is working out nice. So it's been nice. really brilliant yeah. so far. So whose bright idea was it to, to launch the Quest version right after the dungeon update come out, came out? Because <laughs> yeah. that was like, what, a week apart? Or, or yeah, so? yeah. Like, <laughs> I Did you really like that? Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> like these guys are crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, basically, there was two things. Basically, it was the first thing was we 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 knew because we'd been we were in Oculus QA, so we knew uh, Nomad was going to happen. But we were absolutely adamant we want to launch U10 PC first, and the reason is because it was a huge, huge update. It was a Dungeons update. Super hyped. All the PC fans super hyped about it. Yeah. So we didn't want to come along with Nomad and suck all the wind, you know, out of the PC version. Uh, because, you know, the, the players are really hyped for this. And, you know, we're, we're posting memes on the subreddit and we're having a laugh. And so, so, you know, we don't want to change the narrative there. We want to enjoy this uh, rollout of U10. And then the second thing was, because we're not touching the PC, uh, you know, in any shape or form, we want to make sure that the PC players didn't even think we would hurt the PC in any way. So again, so again, like, you know, everyone's waiting eagerly for U10. 
last thing we want to do is be like, oh, hey, uh, here's a Quest version. And then PC player is like, well, that's great. Where's my U10? You yeah. know, so, so we, want to, we want to make sure we rolled out U10. It's working well. Players are enjoying it. They're having a good time. And then later it's like, oh, by the way, <laughs> here's a <the> Quest version. <laughs> um, and then uh, why we released it so soon? We just thought it'd be kind of funny. Like, we just, we just, thought, it'd be, we just thought it'd be cool, you know, like to, uh, you know, because, you know, sometimes you hear like, oh, you know, such and such a game's coming out and then coming out next year. And it's like, oh, yep. that's great. We just thought, wouldn't it be cool for Quest players who've been, you know, begging for like three years, oh, can you please make a Quest game? Wouldn't it be funny that if it was announced at Connect and then like a week later, it's like, you know, <laughs> Announcing Nomad, boom, here it is. You know, and, and yeah, you know, players really did enjoy it. So Yeah, as a gamer, like that's my favorite way to have things announced. Because <laughs> yeah. I hate waiting like three yeah. years. Like, when is this coming out? And then I forget about it, you know, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> because we you know we, we did we like we, you know, we don't want to milk it. It's like we just just they've they've waited long enough, you know. So it's like here you go. <laughs> just play it. Like it's it's all good, you know. And I was so, yeah, surprised we enjoyed to see that. the dungeons incorporated into nomad so yeah. that's pretty crazy yeah it was mental it was really crazy <laughs> it was crazy like every bit of performance was squeezed out of that little headset <laughs> like really really was you know and yeah. um and oculus qa is is brutal too you know they're really really tough um because you know they don't want any uh really lousy performing games uh on on the headset and so we were, so 72 is what the, the frame rate is. We were really straddling that line, you know, <laughs> but the, the, the hard part is because it's a physics sandbox. It's like, well, you can do whatever you want. So it's yeah, like, it's... you know, you could come up with some crazy thing that's going to add a ton of physics strain, you know, like you spawn a bunch of shields and then you kick them and do a flip and jump. And <laughs> so it was really, really difficult. And, uh, you know, that was, that was probably the biggest complaint we had too, was, uh, you know, people getting dips. We, you know, we had, we had measured ourselves that there was, you know, uh, like the worst dips we were seeing was like 60, 68 frames per second, which is not great. Uh, you know, no one's happy about that, but we kind of thought, well, you know, this is something we can work on. It's only a couple of frames. So, uh, so that's kind of what we're doing right now, actually. Uh, but, sure. um, but then it's like, yeah, you know, on, on launch day, some people said it was like, uh, they were experienced worse frames than that. But again, it's it's really hard because it's like, you know, it was it something specific? Like, did they uh, trigger a spike lag from some crazy physics? Which you know we would want not to happen too, but you know it's hard to gather data like that. You know, yeah. Because I've always been curious, like w with like frame rate and stuff, with the quest, does it does it kind of change as the battery depletes? Does does it get less powerful? Where you does that affect anything or not really? Hmm. I don't believe so. I was just That's curious. A, I kind of yeah. I don't. I don't believe so. No. Yeah. Whoops. Uh oh. <laughs> Guess he'll be back. Speaking of low battery. <laughs> yeah. So what is, what is the one, what is the biggest difference you'd say in the in the two versions of the game? Then, like, what is there something like you, just kind of had to give up, like probably shadowing and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, exactly. The the biggest um, would be graphics, and um, you know, I I think it's a good looking quest game, but it is, yeah. you know, it just does not hold a candle to PC. Like, uh, hello, um, like P <laughs> PC VR is is gorgeous, you know, and we got that like yeah. new water going, we got the new lighting system going, and there's like all these particle effects, uh, blood decals and stuff. <laughs> uh, but quest it's like it is what it is you know so it's like it, it it's the best we could squeeze out of the quest before it was impossible to, to do anymore and so we have other things too like we uh you know we disabled like the blood and wound uh on bodies and, and, and weapons by default uh but we kept them anyway we you know we, we put them in the options you can turn them on if you want with a little warning you know hey this is going to affect your family and you know, the reason we did it was because, you know, we're not your, your parents, you know, like you yeah. can do whatever the hell, you, you know, <laughs> less frames, but maybe if you're going to play on the arena, you're going to do 1v1s or something like that. No problem, you know, uh, yeah. but it's like we, we, we don't want to, uh, don't mind anything down for our players, you know, like, we, like, let, let, we just kind of like let our players decide, you know, if, if you, yeah. if you're happy with some frames on, on this, 
go ahead and enable all these options, you know? I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Options are great. That's the biggest thing for sure. The graphics. The other thing is uh, the physics in the Quest version would be uh, akin to like the low physics of PC VR. So yep. that was a better trade off. Doesn't and, seem like so bad. I mean, you got some force, force powers, you're good. <laughs> Better than none. Yep. All, all the spells are there, all the weapons are there. Uh, yeah. All the ma- except the Citadel are there, and we're working on Citadel. Uh, nice. Actually, we have some juicy coming for Citadel. We have uh, we completely, uh, <laughs> not completely redid it, but uh, well, I won't spoil it, but there's some juicy change. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You heard yeah. it here, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Viewers. And oh, for any player that probably maybe hasn't got to play the game on PC, like like you said, it is a good looking quest game. Like it runs well and it it does what yeah. you want it to. So that's exactly really... if like if if you've played Quest before, then you kind of know what you're in for. Do you know what I mean? In terms of like uh, visuals and stuff. So what what can you say? But it's like, uh, but if you're a PC player, like you own Blade and Source in PC, and then you go from that into Nomad, you're gonna be like, what? You know, because it's significantly, like, less, you know what I mean? But what can you do? You, you can't, like, it's just, yeah. it's just the way it is, the way the world is. Like, you know, the PC is more powerful than the headset of the Quest. <laughs> so, if somebody's, somebody actually complains about that, then they kind of have a common sense <laughs> problem. I have, I have seen complaints. <laughs> but it's like, um, I, I think, you know, maybe some people don't really maybe understand that, you know, there is very kind of hard limits, you know, and like you're, you're, you're mm-hmm. trying your best, you know what I mean? To, to constrain something to these very definitive ceilings, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it, it is what it is, you know? And I, I actually played the PC version, went right to the quest version and yeah, you notice some stuff, but overall, like I was really impressed. Like I was like, how Brilliant. the hell? <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And like the fact that dungeons is running, like I still don't get that. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's brilliant. Uh, they, they did a really good job uh, yeah. at getting that working. So. And it, it's always confused me because when we first got into, he must be having issues in it. When we <laughs> yeah. first got into VR, um, you know, it was all like, you need a really good PC and really powerful graphics card and this yeah. and that. And that was kind of the, like the high bar, the hurdle. But now games like this are running on a freaking mobile processor, and it's yeah. like, why did we have such a high bar then when we started yeah. out? You know, I, 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 yeah, it's 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 almost backwards because even like, um, you know, like a lot of uh, uh, developers are now turning their eyes towards Quest because the market is just so much bigger, and yeah. you know, so it's it's like, and and it sucks because I'm a, I'm a big PC VR, uh, yep. you know, fanatic. <laughs> uh, I love PC, love my PC VR games. Um, but as a developer, I, I can uh, I can sympathize because, you know, they're launching these PC games and there's just no market. And it's like, well, there goes my studio, you know, yep. but it's like, but, it, but hey, if we cater to the quest, then at least we can survive. We can weather out the storm until the player base grows. And on that same note, I I understand. I don't like it, but I understand why some developers out there are, are you know, merging games uh, to be mm. PC and quest. Um, you know, it's it's like it's not like they're, you know, likely they don't even want to. But it's just like this is how they need to weather the storm, you know. Yeah. And it was just, it just, yeah, it just so happened we were just lucky. We were just we were in just a privileged position because uh, uh, Blade and Sorcery on the PC had, had done so well. Like we had a lot of fans who really supported us, and so we were just in this lucky position that we were able to make a sister game. But you know, not every dev is is that lucky, you know. So it kind of kind of is what it is, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I've always been curious, um, with Blade and Sorcery and, and the, the shenanigans you can get up to, what's what's one of the worst things you've seen someone do that kind of made you like, oh, are we doing the, you know, should we not be <laughs> into like, making this game? Oh man, I've seen I've seen a lot of shit. <laughs> At this point, yeah, it's like the fans continue to surprise. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I've seen weird things from like. F, you know, body part effigies to uh, <laughs> heads on pikes. And and it's never just simple, actually. It's not just like a head in a pike. It's like a head on a statue they built, like a pike statue they built. <laughs> it's always like these are elaborate, grotesque, you know, kind of things. Uh, <laughs> let me see. I saw someone, like, dribbling 
uh, with like, you know, they had trackers on their feet. They were dribbling ahead. I saw that recently. <laughs> uh, I saw I saw something crazy actually on the on the run up to U10, and um, there was a fella on our subreddit, and he was really getting into it, you know, because uh, uh, he, he was making new posts every day. But he was he was using this uh, this mod. I think it's called Lashings, and uh, it's like you can make these kind of like uh, like ropes almost, you know, like magical ropes. And he was he was creating these insane effigies. Uh, that were just like elaborate and they had multiple steps and stuff like that and uh, he was basically summoning you know U10 it was just like a little joke but that was <laughs> mental uh, you know it's completely crazy so yeah wow. they, they, uh, the stuff they come up with is it, it makes me laugh every time they just come up with the craziest <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make you question this, humanity or <laughs> yeah, yeah I was just about to say that actually I was just about to say um, it's, it's a little bit funny because uh, the developer, the founder of the game, Ospi, uh, is not a big violence or gore fella. And yet he, <laughs> he's like accidentally made like what's perceived as one of the most violent <laughs> games out there. But here's a little disclaimer, okay? Technically, you know, if you go and chopping heads off and sticking them on pikes and making weird statues or bypass, that's, you, that's on you. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. We just, we provided the, the, the sandbox simulation experience. <laughs> And it's, you know, it's your mind that's coming up with that. <laughs> and it, it all goes back to that whole thing. It's like, we just don't, we're not into, uh, like, dumbing down things or talking down to the audience and giving, giving our players, like, uh, the benefit of the doubt, you know? And, and so we don't tell you how to play. Um, <laughs> and and uh, it's literally just a simulation sandbox. Um, and, and actually, that drives some people mad, but we can talk about that later. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we don't tell you to have fun. So it's like, Sometimes, you know, I, I hear people complain about AI and stuff, and, and a common one is like, hey, if I just put out my sword like this, you know, and I just walk into an enemy, I can stab them, and I can just do that with everyone. And I always say to them, are you having fun? <laughs> and, you know, they're not having fun. It's like, well, then what are you doing it for? Then? <laughs> you know? yeah. So, it's, it, it, so it, it's, it's a little bit like if you just want to go climb the map, and you want to climb out of the map and just fall into, the, you know, the, the abyss, that's great. You're playing the game right. If you want to like sword fight in like realistic, you know, holding your sword, brilliant. You're playing the game right. You know, like you're, if you just want to mess around the physics, putting buckets on heads or dribbling human heads, <laughs> you know, you're playing the game right. There is no, uh, there is no kind of rules, you know, like we, we want you to have fun, whatever way you want to have fun. And if you're having fun, then you're playing the game. right. You know what so I mean? Like, if you're walking around with a sword sticking out and I walk like right into you and you accidentally <laughs> die, I mean, yeah. you could, that's real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And I tell you something, if 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 that's a fun time for you, then perfect. You're have you're playing it exactly right. <laughs> it's like people who use mods and you know, if they make the game too easy, like I can spawn anything I want and you ruin yeah. the game after two days of play, then it's kinda like Yeah. Why'd you... Exactly. But you know <laughs> the thing the thing we really did learn about this uh is you know, some people just are not that's just not their cup of tea. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions about it all, and it's completely understandable, by the way, is when you look at Blade and Sorcery, you think to yourself, it's going to be uh, a sword fighting action game. That's what you're thinking. So, so you mm -hmm. go in kind of with that vibe, you think, I'm about to play a game, and it's going to be a sword fighting action game. In actual fact, uh, Blade and Sorcery is a simulation game, disguised as a sword fighting game. And that's, <laughs> I think, the part that just is really hard for some people to wrap their heads around. So it's a simulator first. It's, it's, it's a medieval fantasy simulator. That's why you can do so many crazy things. And that's kind of like the secret sauce. That's, that's why it feels so different from every other game. The closest thing you could have is, is Boneworks, because they also went to fit the physics sandbox route. Um, but that's, that's what it is first. That's why you can do so many strange small things you know like dribbling ahead or yeah. like you know hooking swords together and making some crazy thing and or whatever and then from that simulation there grows the game you know a sword fighting yes. game is grown out of it but because of that because of the nature of what that is uh you know there's no like levels there's no like storyline or anything like that and as i say some some gamers they just have a hard time with that because they're they're ready for levels and you know uh, uh, direction 
and they just don't enjoy like a sandbox. They just don't. They just don't want. They don't want to be left alone to decide what is fun. Yeah. They actually kind of want, you know, here's what you're supposed to do, and then you do it and you win it. That's kind of what. That's what's cool to them, and that's kind of where we're going actually with the, with the final, you know, with dungeons and stuff and the final goal. So we're adding in this pro- progression mode, exactly for those kind of players, uh, because yeah. for some people they just they just kind of want a little bit of uh, guidance for what to do next. So it, there you go. Funny when that problem comes up because I remember I don't remember which one it was one of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare's or something. We we're going through co-op like PJ, me, maybe a couple other guys came up to this room where we're clearing the room, and you know we're trying to be tactical, so you got to clear the room before you move on. But mm-hmm. the game wanted it scripted, so it wanted you to pass like a certain spot before the guy mm-hmm. stops. We're in there for like thirty minutes, going like this game is suddenly behaving because we didn't yeah. get. The checkpoint that the game wanted us to go here and do that we were being tactical there you go. That's, that's been a funny divide it's kind of like if i don't give you a checkpoint and you're used to checkpoints mm-hmm. you just sit in the corner and with your thumb in your mouth and cry because you know the mm-hmm. universe just broke and yeah you don't know you're what to do like on an invisible railroad there you know right your pokemon snap game stopped moving and then <laughs> yeah life goes nuts so yeah i love sandbox games and i think that's kind of made it difficult with VR games because, you know, gamers get it, get into VR thinking, ooh, games. And a lot of, like, the experiences, like, are totally different and, you know, yeah. a little more mind-opening, if you will. And, like, they just don't know what to do. And they're like, well, this is dumb. Pass. Like, <laughs> it's interesting. I haven't shot anybody in the face in the first yeah. three minutes of hit and go. <laughs> I, I know how I know how weird this sounds. But I'm getting to a stage where I, I almost don't even think of a Blade and Sorcery like a game anymore. It's like almost like something different. Um, mm-hmm, yeah. Like an experience or something. Like, but as I say, it's like it's a medieval fantasy simulator. So that's kind of like a weird genre that we don't have. Like we have flight <laughs> simulator. Uh, <laughs> this is a medieval guy <laughs> simulator. But, but like oh, this God. is VR. No, this, is, this is VR. It's like, you know, if we want to do a normal game, we could just do it on PC. But why not utilize all the glory of this immersion? You know, yeah. that seems like more mm-hmm. logical. If you want just like a run of the mill game, you could go to PC. You know, there's plenty of games out there, you know? <laughs> and so it's, this is why it's such a weird game. It's, it's really thinking kind of outside the box. And, you know, that tends to be polarizing. It tends to either have players who are just like, oh, rabidly love it. <laughs> love it. Or players who are like, I hate this. I don't get it. Why is this so popular? It's a tech demo that kills me, by the way, when people say that. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, and they just can't understand, like, what is the appeal about this? You know, and yeah. this is it. It's like, I get it. It's weird. It's something different that you've, you know, you've just not seen. Um, with the exception of, like I say, Boneworks is the closest thing you could probably get to it. But, but even Boneworks, I don't think, is on the no. same in, as Blade and Sorcery. They're on their own kind of journey. <laughs> yeah, that... One of our friends is like that. I remember we th- might have just said this the other episode, but we were playing like the old Destiny game when that came out and it was all a craze. And he's like, there's no chest in this room. There's If you go down a hallway, there should always be something. But it's like, <laughs> it's the fun of looking around. Like you can't look at four hallways and get something every time. Like it's, yeah, it's that's, more fun that, to just like not know and have to have it experience it. Don't have to. So that, so totally. Yeah. Oh, you're spot on. Okay, so some, sometimes I, I, I read messages, you know, for the developers and stuff, um, and people say, again, we're not into the hand-holding thing. Give the players the benefit of the doubt. You know, players are smarter than, than you think. Let them figure it out. So, you know, we don't have any, like, compass or maps or anything like that for dungeons. So it's like, figure it out. Just look around. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just do and it. Just make it the fun. Every, every other game is just like that. I love the games where it's like, if you feel like spending a few minutes, sometimes that's if I'm in a, in you know in a hurry trying to get something done in a game and I don't have a map, it's kind of like ugh. But the games are like you have the ability to figure it out and it's not you know like too confusing. Like the stuff is here, you just do it. I, I can't st- like I, I can't even play most PC games anymore because uh, without turning off the hood at least I yep. <laughs> I just tried for the first time uh, back for blood. Is that what it's called? Yep. Uh, the other day. <laughs> I can barely even see the screen. It's because you got this big, dirty, like, yep. you know, characters here. You've got objectives here right in your eyeball center. You've got all this information here, all this information. 
it's like, oh my God, it, it's, it's, it's basically just looking at like spreadsheets or something, you know, I, I can't mm-hmm. stand Hood. Yeah. Hate it. So, 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 you know, in, in Blade and Sorcery, everything gamey was pulled out of it, stripped right <laughs> out of it. No health bars or anything. The player has a health bar, but you have to kind of look at it on his wrist. It's kind of like a magically kind of immersive thing. But like enemies, no HP, that kind of stuff. And I always turn that stuff off in games anyway. If me I too. Can, just I, like, I, I, yeah. I don't I hate it. In real life, if I shot that guy with a sniper rifle and he didn't go down, I wouldn't know that he's only got like 10% yeah. health left. I just wanted yeah. to like, oh crap, I, I, he's running, I think you it, know. I think when you have that kind of stuff on, it, it makes your interaction with the game different. You think about the game different. So, you know, we stripped that stuff out and, and, and that's risky because, you know, you're, because it's kind of untested. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because you're, you're basically saying to a player, like players are used to like, say, going through dungeons, fighting a bunch of guys, and then they come to a boss. Who's the boss? Well, he's just a normal guy, but he has new attacks and he has <laughs> you know, three times the HP or something. Well, we were like, you know, screw that. What if, what, you know, it's like, what if there was like a knight, okay? He's full clad armor. He looks like this big, tough guy, but with his swift stab to the neck, he dies just as good as anyone else. Yep. And that's, the, that's you know, that, that was, that <laughs> was the risk. That, that was the gamble we took, you know, because it was like, no one was doing this. Uh, we don't know how they're going to, you know, how are players going to react, but, you know, players are loving it. So, and, but, but, yeah. to, but to quickly go back, I was just saying about Dungeons, yeah, I, I, would, I would get some messages and, and people would be saying, you know, uh, they'd be getting lost in Dungeons. And, you know, sometimes the exit is on the ceiling. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like you have to climb up a rope or, or climb up some scaffolding or something like that. Sometimes the exit's on the floor, you know, you go down. And yeah. uh, it's tricky. But, hey, that's kind of the point, you know, you're, you're Dungeon Splunking, you know, mm-hmm. like it's, it's supposed to be a little bit. Look around, yeah. like take your time, you know, smell the roses, like it's VR, you know, enjoy it. Yep. Don't race through to the end. I first started playing like that, like Assassin's Creed Black Flag or something like that. Oh, was, yeah. You know, get a little bored because <laughs> I like, you know, it's just easy play, but it's fun to sit through. And it happened. I usually don't Google stuff unless there's like a, I think it's a bug. And I happened right. to run across like a Kotaku article that was like, hey, stupid, why don't you turn this stuff off? And then instead of like looking at the ground and the checkpoints and the dotted lines, like you look up in the yeah. trees, there's a monkey. Shoot the monkey. Yeah. And, um, Ubisoft there, um, is great for the HUD. Just take the HUD off because you're right. It's like a, a barrier between you and the visual. Yeah. So I'm 100% on your level. That's exactly yeah. how I enjoy games. And Black Flag, perfect example. I, I play Black Flag without a hood. Turn it all <laughs> off. Yep. And then it the was like. Thing I, you know, the only thing I wish you could turn off. You can't turn off, you know, the little highlighter you get on the enemy when you're about to assassinate him. You couldn't turn that off. That's the only thing. Yep. But, but otherwise, Black yep. Flag is amazing. For point. that stuff. And the problem I think a lot of game devs have is they don't put in the realistic stuff. Like you said, stab the knight in the neck. What are his real weak points? People don't build the games to, like, cater to that kind of place. Just use a bullet sponge or whatever they call it. Hit him three times more and he's dead. But it's like, well, yeah, it takes that, a little more what... thought to make it realistic. Make it realistic. Boom. Sandbox. That, that that killed me about uh, Cyberpunk, uh, by the way. I, uh, yeah. I was so devastated. Because uh, I used to love playing The Witcher um, mm-hmm. without a hood. You know, you're fighting monsters, it feels a little bit different. Because it's like you're slashing them, you don't see their health bar. But you're like, well, this is cool because they're monsters or whatever. But <laughs> in Cyberpunk, that just did not translate. Because now they're human enemies, but you're sh- and you're shooting them as well. But yeah. you know the sponge is there. You know the HP yep. bar is there. But you're just sponging bullets on it. Yeah. They really ruined something for me. <laughs> and things like the Division games too, this bullet sponges. Ugh. Exact same problem. I literally <laughs> couldn't play it. Literally couldn't play it. It just put me off so much. Yeah. And the cool thing, like with dungeons, like you said, like I jumped in without reading, looking at anything, even though you guys don't really say much, which is awesome. And I, you know, crept around, made my way, and I... I'm like, oh, these are kind of randomized. All right. And I found the one exit on the ceiling because I was just like, I went in every room, took the people out, like looked in every corner. I was like trying to do whatever you could in every room. And first time I played, I made it to the boat, but I think I was uneasy because I only had like a half hour to play. It was like really late at night. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I hit the boat. I'm like, oh, that was awesome. And I got to get back in there. But yeah, it was just like you. You kind of come into the level and you can go left or right and down or yeah. whatever. And it's just a nice. Yeah, nice... we just, it's just the attitude. It's just, you know, give your players benefit of the doubt. Players are smarter than you think, you know, and you, you don't, keep, you know, you don't have to keep bombarding them with tutorials. And yeah. if, in fact, you know, one of the inspirations for Blade and Sorcery was the old game Dark Messiah of Mighty Magic, which uh, <laughs> myself and Cosby love, love, love. 
Yeah. And funny enough, that was actually one of the most notorious for, you know, you would always get that little pop-up that says, press X to kick. You know, and you just show the whole, you're, you know, you're 20 hours into the game and you're getting this pop-up saying, press X. It's like, I know how to fucking kick. You know, yeah. but um, uh, yeah, just, you know, we don't go down. And even like when it comes to story, so there's no storyline to the game. Uh, but we do, that doesn't mean we don't have lore and we're working on that right now, in fact. Uh, but the same thing, you know, we're not going to spoon feed the players lore. We're not, you know, you're not going to get a cutscene that says, welcome to the world of blah. And, you know, you are <laughs> such and such, you know, hero. I, blah. No, no. It's like, we're going to, exactly, it's going to be yeah. way, it's, it's going to be way more uh, subtle. So like you could maybe find like runes, uh, you know, kind of like hieroglyphy kind of things on like a dungeon wall or something. And then maybe what is this? And then that might tie into something else. And we let the players piece it together. You know, let them, exactly. let them figure out. It's a bit, a bit more fun. Oh, we just start playing like Forza Horizon 5, which is fun for a driving game. But I sit there and like, pardon my French, but it's like, why do games just sit there and suck the player's balls the whole time? Because it's like, hey, <laughs> superhero. Did you, and then it's like all like, you're just the God's gift to the game. And the game, would, I guess it wouldn't exist if you weren't playing it, really. If you think about yeah, it that way. But it's I, guess, like, I guess that's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm not a fan of that. Like, like even in even in games I like, um, like Skyrim. Like I enjoy Skyrim and stuff. But I always hate that player equals, you know, the hero of the world. Yeah, stuff. and it's just like I, I, oh, I, the Dragonborn. Yeah, and it's just like just yeah. shut. Do you, do you know? Do you know why I think I hate it? Because, um, I feel like the stakes are too low. It's like I don't know if either of you guys play Dungeons and Dragons, but that's one of the things I always loved about Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of pen and paper role play game is you're just some schmuck, you know, yep. and you could die <laughs> anytime. You know, you're not mm -hmm. the hero of the world. You're just some guy, right? Um and uh if something goes bad, boom, you're dead. Next character. And I love that because yep. the stakes are high, you feel like, oh my character, you know, you, you feel it. Um every battle is like tense because you don't want to die, you don't lose your you don't lose your dude. But um in those kind of, you know, hero larger than life kind of things it's kind of like you just feel like you're gonna you're gonna get to a certain point where you're gonna steamroll over everything you know yeah. like, you know it's coming <laughs> like a, you know you're gonna save the day you know what i mean right. like, you know it's gonna happen you're destined for it to happen and, and if they know. make games like that what i never understood it's like a theme park kind of game anyway i used to play star wars galaxies like 20 years ago mm. fantastic game for the time for the first mm. month it was out they ruined it but it's like <laughs> everywhere you go it's like oh there's jabba's palace oh you know, like every like everybody's there like in costume doing their stuff but if you want games like that how come you even have to die in those games like there's no risk there's no ever to start the level over if you're gonna make me play an action movie why not just like wing me yeah and then you know like i still live through it so i don't have to redo the damn level like if you're gonna kill me just kill me don't yeah make me yeah. start so there's a whole bunch of these design aspects i'm kind of liking about <laughs> Let them go. Let them rip. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just like, uh, you know, p people are just thinking, okay, what works, what sells? You know, yeah. and it's like, why would why would you risk something different uh, and risk losing it all? You know, and maybe maybe that was like a little advantage we had because, uh, you know, we were such a small studio. Like, it was really just Cosby. And what am I saying? It was, really, it was just Cosby, you know. And, and then mm -hmm. uh, I came on in the... Uh, in the early days, but not as a coder, you know, I'm not a coder or anything. I'm just a, a community manager first. And then I did the marketing and now I'm a producer for the studio. But back then, just him. So he didn't have, not that he didn't have much to lose because he did quit his job and, it, you know, he did spend <laughs> like years working. On it. But if it all went south, he would probably go back. He'd be working back in an office, you know? So it's kind of like, he kind of had the uh, the opportunity to just try something crazy. And so then he did, you know, he was just kind of like, well, I'm going to do this crazy game. Uh, it's going to be a very acquired taste, I think. And if players don't like it, players don't like it, you know, and I'm just going to do it my way. That's it. You like it or you don't well, like it. And it's like a passion project that really did kind of work totally, out then. Totally. <laughs> the totally. Stuff. Yeah. And it's kind of like, um, you know, harkening back to the like the, the old days, but like you know, like if you grew up in the nineties and the early two thousands and stuff like that, you know, like kind of like channeling some uh, vibes from like uh, older games, um, and that's kind of how we're trying to be as a studio too. You know, like uh, not not do the not do the kind of corporate studio thing, and uh, you know, that's why I, I try to be really really active as a community manager. I always try and be really really active, really interactive uh, with the fans and stuff because. 
I want them to feel like I'm a person and, you know, yeah. this is an early access journey. We're all in this together. The fans are worth more than the money in their pockets. You know what I mean? It's, uh, which is another thing, you know, it's like, <laughs> don't, uh, don't fuck over your fans. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, yeah. it's not, cause okay, you know, you could make a big book fast, but, but you know, when the next time comes around, forget about it. You know, the fans are going to remember that shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's, so I really try my best uh, when interacting with fans to just tell them exactly what's going on. Uh, be really blunt about, about things. And, uh, you know, when there's problems, it's like, Hey, this fucking sucks. There's problems. You know what I mean? It's like, but Hey, we're working on it. And I feel like we've developed this amazing trust, uh, with the community. Um, and so now we have all these nomad players coming in, you know, <laughs> many of them probably don't know us. So this is going to be a new challenge now to have them know us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, but yeah. we're, you know, myself and Cosby, huge community advocates uh we really believe communities are what make the game i appreciate the honesty because yeah. you don't get that often i mean vr is a whole different thing like we talk to devs obviously all the time yeah. and they're awesome but like in you know flat screen gaming and all that like there's none of that mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like right. like i've said it on the podcast like vr came along and kind of i was starting to like hate gaming i'm like is it me yeah. am i getting old are the games start yeah. just sucking? Is it, you I know, know, Call exactly of Duty every mean. fucking yeah. day? It's like, I and then VR exactly came in like, a whole new fresh breath of air, and it was like, oh, thank God, it's not me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this game. So, I know just exactly to be able to, to reach out to like people like yourself on Twitter and just say, hey, how's it going? And you answer, it's like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I try yeah. to answer literally everything, man. It's And it's crazy, and it's especially crazy now with Nomad, but... Uh, you know, sometimes my backlog is, I'm, I'm like working multiple days <laughs> to get through the message. It's nuts. It is crazy. Uh, but I try it because um, uh, I have this kind of like a uh, little personal philosophy, uh, which is kind of really nothing to do with blending stories. This is my own just little philosophy, which is I personally find the internet super toxic. And uh, I'm not a big, so I don't use social media personally and stuff like that. Um, and before blending sources, I didn't use social media at all. I just was like, I'm done with that. Uh, and I think the reason it is this way is because we've all conditioned ourselves to thinking about other people like they're not humans. You know, you're just a username. And it's too easy. It's too damn easy to think that way. Um, so when I got into this position where I was like, okay, now I'm leading a community. Well, hang on a second. I hate internet communities. <laughs> you know, they're, they're mean and toxic and stuff like that. So when I got into that position, I was like, well, I have my own little space in the internet. I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to treat people like more than just their username. So the reason I try to respond to literally every goddamn comment is because I want the person to know, hey, someone saw you. Someone read that. And even if it's just to say like, LOL or something like that, like, hey, I read your comment. You know, I acknowledge you are real, you know, and uh, I just feel like that is, it, it, that would make a difference for the guy on the other side then, you know? Yeah. And hey, our community is awesome. So maybe it's uh, effective, you know? So. Yeah, I think it is. And I, you know, we were talking before we did the podcast and you're like, Hey, this sounds like fun. One thing though, your episodes are like two fucking hours long. And like, yeah, that's just, we don't have to do that. Like I just, I laughed so hard at that. Cause you're just yeah. honest. Like I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like, no, no, oh no, man. It's just, I'm so tired. Like I, I'd be up at 6am every morning. <laughs> you know, it's like 6pm yeah, like, right now. I was up at 3am this morning. So it's just like, oh, I'd be exhausted. Yeah, I totally wanted to do it, but it's just like, I cannot weather two and a half hours of chat. <laughs> yeah. And, and usually you just like, try to wrap it up around an hour just to respect people's time. And some people just keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's like, fine. Okay, sure. Yeah. And I might fall asleep if I am had a long day, too, in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't even know where we are now uh, in in time. Oh. PJ just passed right through your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. He's like, I don't even know where we are. And you're just like zombie and right. <laughs> Love the glitch. Yeah. It's been 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, brilliant. It's, it flies by. It really does. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it That's does. what happens. Yeah. Um, and I love the, the comparison between what you're explaining and how you guys work and how the game works compared to all the regular flat gaming stuff because. Since, like you said, Witcher came out, fantastic game. It seems like every other game is like, let's pull parts of Witcher and put it in ours. I think even the new yeah. Halo game is going to be open world. It, mm. It's like, 
well, every Ubisoft game is now open world and RPG ish. Mm-hmm. I guess it, some of them are good, but it's like do something. I know it it, 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 it it actually kills me. Now, this is not to say there's no such thing as a good version of this game, but it kind of kills me that you know you 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 see another flat game title and it's an early access open world sandbox uh, building game. You know, create as like in Minecraft. You know, mm-hmm. the Minecraft formula. And you know, there's plenty of games that are awesome, like Valheim was a great mm-hmm. example that, you know, you can mix it up, but, you know, you see so many Minecraft clones and stuff. And it's, again, it goes back to the whole thing. Does it work? Will it sell? So developers are sitting yes. there at home, they're thinking, okay, what's going to sell? What's going to make me money? And it's like, well, this is popular, you know, and then they, they kind of <laughs> adopt that. And that's totally okay because everything is kind of like been done. So everything is kind of mm-hmm. based off everything else anyway. But yep. you got to have something unique. To it, right? Yeah. You, you know, can borrow you, parts, but yeah, you got to have a reason. Like, what's the yeah. special sauce? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought Valheim was was great. That was, that was mm-hmm. really, uh, that was really unique. Back in your seat. <laughs> what's going on? Sorry, <laughs> I'm sitting here. I don't... <laughs> You're like, hi. Yeah. The funniest part was he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> You're <walking around>. that. <laughs> yeah, sneaking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like yeah. I played a lot of Valheim, and it's great. But it's also like you can tell what they were doing because when you get to look at the mm-hmm. game progression, it's very mechanically and like abusive mm-hmm. towards the player's time. It's like you do all this, you level it all mm-hmm. up, and then you get one thing and you do it all over again with a new quality, new iron mm-hmm. and then silver. And it's like pretty much. I I don't that. know. I I don't know if you guys feel the same, but a, a big kind of issue I I have with with those kind of games, like harvest games. You know, like you have to harvest ten wood, harvest. We yeah. don't have a lot of time anymore. And so it's yeah. like, if I have like 30 minutes an hour after work, it's like my precious, precious time now, you know, and no. I want to enjoy my hobby. I don't want to spend it chopping wood. Do you know what and I mean? That's For, what you want to do. Yeah. But like, uh, you're right. I don't want to do but, that right now. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to grind. Do you know what I mean? Like, no. I don't want to just grind to, uh, to, yeah. to do something. And it's funny how like games, like, you know, they were like mostly like single player story driven. And then we went to multiplayer and then open yeah. world. And now for me, like I'm going back to story one yeah. person, six hour game is perfect. I don't need 40. I don't need 60. Back yeah. in my seat. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm still in my seat. I don't know. What's going on. I know. It's just funny. I'll warp and maybe that'll Whoops. fix it. <laughs> there, maybe it'll leave me alone. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's, uh, maybe an age thing too. You know, like I kind of have a feeling we're probably, of the same generation and it's oh, yeah. uh you know i'm 43 you, i think <laughs> so you're in the 90s uh 90s yep. <laughs> you grew up in the 90s as well and yeah it's like i think it's just kind of like this the new era of kind of game standard is a lot of them are kind of grindy and it's about maximizing the length that you get out of a game even if artificial but right. you know for us uh you know you know with the early 2000 games and stuff like that and they were mostly kind of story driven and, you know, you play it five hours, six hours, maybe 10 hours. And that's kind of it. Uh, yeah. So maybe that's the difference, you know, I don't know. There are but some kind of... games, big games I do enjoy, but like the last mm-hmm. one that was, was World of Warcraft where like, yeah, it was grindy, but you could explore these huge freaking areas. And there is always something interesting everywhere. Mm. And then, you know, the other games that come out that are like, you know, that size that there's just nothing interesting in them <laughs> you know well, yeah that people are yeah. like what what yeah. works what yeah. sells what and then and that led to like the mmo craze where there was like so there was like 100 coming out every week <laughs> but they were all like 10 percent as full as warcraft was because they took that one seriously <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they know that they're clones yeah. and it's like can't can't yeah. keep up yeah well well this is this is it you know it's, it's like uh i actually never played world of warcraft but um but from what you're saying it's like sure if you want to have this huge world and it's it's interesting. Well, that's brilliant. That's the best. That's the best ever. Uh, but you know, I would suggest you know don't artificially inflate you know mm-hmm. the game time by adding yeah. grind to it and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, I was really I into mean, Ark when it, when that came out. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was really really into. That. And I tell you, <laughs> just, despite being so into it, that was a fucking grind. You know what I mean? Like you're taming dinosaurs <laughs> for like eight hours. Now I had the mm-hmm. time back then, but. Now, forget about it. Literally, yep. <laughs> literally, that game is now locked off to me. You know what I mean? Yes. I just don't. I just don't get. I just don't get that. I just don't get grind in games. I just don't. 
I just, I just don't get it. You know, he's grinding to unlock a helmet. Yeah, and he's... they're all having the cash shop to shortcut. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's probably yeah, actually yeah. That's so it's, it's not like... really about grind for enjoyment, is it? Well, sometimes grinds. it, you know, Halo or not Halo, um, World of Warcraft introduced the grinding too. I'm mean, sure other games did at first, but that's like the giant spike that you know it was the Michael Jordan of of <laughs> video games mm-hmm. that kind of pulled people in. But every five minutes, there's like a new currency. You got to grind rep with these fur bogs or whatever they were called to get <laughs> some mm-hmm, mm-hmm. fifty hours worth of work for yeah. like doing the same quest a day or some crap. It's like, holy yeah, crap. I don't get it. But but you know you hit on something there. Like yeah, I, I think it's it's kind of by design. It's kind of like it's not it's not you're grinding because yeah you're gonna have fun. It's you're grinding so you know have fun and you'll buy the unlock pack or whatever and yeah. and again you know it's just it's just kind of how it's how it is now and it wasn't that way in our day you know mm-hmm. and uh you know when expansion packs came out um they were awesome do you know what i mean like i was i would look forward like Baldur's gate expansion packs mm-hmm. like, oh like yes. new content for my favorite game i can't <laughs> awesome uh, and i remember the first ever expansion pack I, if it was even called expansion pack, uh do you remember i think it was oblivion the horse you say the horse armor the horse DLC. Yeah. yeah i was gonna that, make a joke about about not yeah. playing sorcery but i won't <laughs> <laughs> that horse armor horrified me when that yes. that was the first ever time when that kind of thing happened that i can remember yep, and i was just like hurt. what are they thinking and now it's like well actually that's like standard now like you see that yeah. everywhere i was oh, just talking know. about that with some guy at work the other day like i think he was talking about um what's that silly game that's so popular with children the third person fortnite. shooter yeah For, fortnite i'm like so he was talking about like his friend was like just spending hundreds of dollars i'm like remember when they tried to charge six bucks for horse armor <laughs> this was like this week <laughs> i'm like remember that shit now it's like ten dollars for an outfit <laughs> like, yeah god was it only yeah. was it six dollars if that, i remember that, right, that yeah. seems cheap now <laughs> like yeah. it's still too much but compared yeah. to yeah compared to the way it is now it's like wow and we were like outraged back then. It's like, oh, oh yeah. you know, this is this is the worst PR move in history, and like now it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no way to break. It's it's nuts because like back in the day, like kids today don't remember you playing the NES, and that was the probably <laughs> the only game you're going to have for like nine months or a year. Yeah, <laughs> and they knew that, so they'd make them really fucking hard. Like, yeah, literally, you had to work. Yeah. You had to work your ass off in Super Nintendo's the same way. Pause like, or save. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times, yeah, you couldn't save. You might get like a level code yeah, after that level. Yeah. Weird. But then, uh, like, it seems the difficulty is replaced by, like you said, the artificially inflated game time to get you to, like, well, you were playing those games for like three months. How do you play this game for three months? We don't have enough time to make that. <laughs> so then you just do stupid yeah. stuff. Now you're doing hard stuff. Now you're doing stupid stuff. And it's just like there seems like there's a logical progression of just crap. And now you got the open world games where it's like, let's fill the map with like eighty thousand stupid quests. But it's <laughs> yeah. if people just look, if you're really gonna copy The Witcher, copy The Witcher yeah. in the fact that each tiny yeah. quest, which a million of them, were a fully yeah. voice acted story. S- that- you're so right. You're so right. I loved that. I loved that every sub quest had a plot line, a beginning, a middle, an end, and most yeah. of them a little twist. Characters that you cared is about. Amazing. Yeah. Even the smallest character, he was like interesting. Just this little mm-hmm. guy. As yeah. opposed to like, go collect ten wolf pelts. It's like, okay, you did I, that. Okay, now go collect ten shells. Yeah. Like, okay, and I remember quest. half of the yeah. side quests in Witcher way more than the actual yeah. main story. <laughs> yeah, it's me too. bizarre. Me too, actually. Yeah. 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 I mean, there was the one quest, and I don't want to give it away, so I'm not going to give specifics because, like, I know it's 2015 or so game. But I'm going to still... replay it when the HD version comes out for yeah. Xbox. Somebody hasn't played it or doesn't remember. <laughs> like, you do this one tiny thing in the beginning, and then yeah. it, like, sets a cascading of stuff that you just completely forgot about. And it comes back, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> Brilliant. So I good. I remember that. Yeah. In PJO to test, like, sometimes I just don't forget stuff. Like, to this day, I can sit down and play like uh, Zelda, the Super Nintendo Zelda, in like mm-hmm. eight hours, start to finish. I can just, I just, I can walk through it, and my brain won't let go of some of that stuff. But it lets go of every other game we've played, except for like yeah. Witcher Three. Like, my brain's like, yeah. remember that because it's awesome. You no, know, forget it because I want to play it again someday. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Witcher Three was so good, man. I, 
I enjoyed it so heartily. You know what I mean? I, I, I just enjoyed it so, so much. It was just really special. Yeah. Yeah. I walked that map so much. <laughs> yeah. Same. I, I tried not to fast travel as much as I could. I just, I just soaked it in as much as I could. It was brilliant. I always get in trouble though, especially with open world games, because like you'll out level stuff or you won't be in a level enough or something will be locked. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there four hours trying to get into it. <laughs> that always yeah. bothers me. Fantastic. And, and I know we're getting off the blade and sorcery thing, but like, <laughs> well, it, we're talking about all these old games. It's, it's not crazy off topic because it is, I mean, you see where we're going. We're, we're trying something different. You know, we're trying to get yes. away from the cookie cutters of, of, of modern gaming and, uh, just do something different and not gamey. And, uh, mm -hmm. so. You can see, it's basically, you can see where the influences came from. You know, it came from <laughs> the games we grew up on and the way we think about games and the gaming industry and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, and you it's... want to make a car game, there's a bunch of them that's been out. You better do something that somebody else hasn't, you know, like, better be the best damn combat game. Like, a lot of yeah. people are just like, oh, I, I need to make a combat game. So they put a combat yeah. in there and they have everything. And then the combat might not be that good. But it's like, you know, just... <laughs> Something and I, I get a lot of people um, messaging me and they're like indie devs and they say, you know, you know, what's the trick? What's the trick to <laughs> how did you sell so much? And, uh, you know, uh, um, what's the trick to the popularity of the game? And, so that. and this is something that not everyone likes to hear. And I totally understand it. But I always say to uh, these devs, I say, uh, look at your game. What is your shtick? What is it about your game that if I was just a guy and look on a store with a five second attention span, why am I going to pay for your game and not millions of other games? Okay. So what is it about your game pops out? And uh, the thing is when you're a developer and you've worked on something for like two years, you know, you're just, and you're putting all your soul into it, you know, and doing it. And if it comes out mediocre, that sucks. You know, like you, that's not fun, you know? And, and, and I think it's really hard, uh, you know, for for people to uh, look at something they worked so so hard on, and then realize that maybe they don't have a shtick. You know, they don't they don't have a unique sell uh, that that is going to attract the players. And uh, like I say, it sucks. I completely know it sucks, but it that's why you know for every one success, there's you know a hundred fails. You know, so this yeah. is it because it, it's so saturated, especially PC. Yeah. It's so saturated. Um, so you have to do something a little bit different. Even VR, you know, and, and VR isn't saturated the same way PC is, but even VR, the same thing. It's like if, if, if there's like five, well, when I say five, if there's like 10 sword fighting games, what's different? Why, yeah. why would I get this one, not this one? And it's like our little thing was, well, we are the only game that had full melee physics. That's it. That's the sell. You want full yeah. melee physics? Get this. And then, yeah. pe you know, people saw it were like, I want full melee physics. It's like, and I played it like, hey, this is, <laughs> this is different. And, uh, and, and that was the appeal of Blade and Sorcery. And, and, you know, as well as this, this was back in 2018. And, like, you got to understand, back then, literally, this was the only game. There yeah. was uh, Boneworks was in development at the same time, which was actually super interesting because <laughs> neither influenced each other. But they were in, in development at the same time, but they had not announced a game. So, there, so that was that. And then there was other stuff like Nim Sony. But again, uh, these were not announced projects and stuff. Uh, I, think, I think that guy was working at the same time. But you, had, you, know, you, had, to, you had to dig him up, basically, to, to find information about the game. So it was new and it was original and it was a unique selling factor. Yeah. And if you have a survival crafting open world grind game, there's the problem, you know, it's like, cause it's, it's been done a million times. So it's like, what's, what's unique about your open world crafting uh, game? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what's the unique factor that I get in your game and not anyone else's game. And there is the hard part. There's the hard part. Yeah. And I can, I can tell you, like, I just played a game with the dev the other night and he has having so much fun with his own game. I was just blown away. So much so that his brother and his father were playing with us. And the, all three of them were just fucking dying laughing the whole night, like having a blast. I'm like, Brilliant. this is insane. This is amazing. Like, 
I, I've never seen that before. <laughs> I can't wait till that game comes out because holy crap. <laughs> That's brilliant. So, yeah, if you don't enjoy it, then maybe, yeah. you know, no one else might either. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, that's, that's true for this too, because when I was on board uh, in 2018, I was not associated with the game at all. I was just a YouTuber uh, and I was, you know, trying to make a name for myself as a YouTuber reviewing games. And uh, and surprise, surprise, my little, <laughs> my shtick, again, YouTubers, everyone wants to be a YouTuber, again, why watch you and not the 50 million other people who are YouTubers? So my, like, little shtick was, uh, I would try to find games that no one else cared about and talk about them. And I knew I, would, I, knew I was never going to be huge. I knew I wasn't going to be a big YouTuber or anything like that. But that was my little shtick. That was my little piece of the internet. And so when I came across Blade and Sorcery, no surprise, I loved it because it was completely original. And man, I just played hell of it. I, I just was loving it. It was just, it was like uh, a drug to me. You know, I just couldn't get enough of it. So I kind of quickly became like a blade and source of YouTuber uh, as a result. And um, yeah, I just loved it. It was just, and, and my, my kind of philosophy on it was like, uh, I would play this game and it would be a warts and all uh, philosophy, yep. which is like, I fucking hate uh, hyperbole. And stuff like that, and and that's what everyone does these days. Uh, you know, the greatest, you know, must watch the yeah. best game you've ever played. Fifty have YouTube titles, the best game you ever is it really the best game you ever played. You know, and I I, I hate that. So so my kind of my attitude on Blade and Sorcery was like boring. It was like thumbnails would be real. It wouldn't be like photoshopped or you know arrows or circles and face like oh yeah, yeah. The, the, this oh thing. my god, uh, wouldn't yeah. be like that. It would always be title, Blade and Sorcery, dot, dot, uh, whatever the video is. Not the best game ever, because I wasn't trying to sell, you know, I wasn't trying to get clicks or anything like that. Uh, no clickbait, no hyperbole. But I fucking loved it. And I think the fans who watched the videos, they knew that. They knew I was just a guy having a laugh. Just laughing me fucking ass off at this game <laughs> and loving it. And then saying, oh, hey, check out this jank. You know, like, look at this. Or, oh, there's a bit of a problem here. Developer says he's working on it. You know, don't try and cover it up. Tell the, tell the players, hey, look, yeah. this is a funny shit. Here's a problem. Don't worry, we'll fix that. Don't worry about it. You know, and, and I think that's what really resonated uh, with the very, very, very early Blade and Sorcery spores. They were just like, this feels authentic. And guess what? It was authentic. And maybe that's the big difference, you know. And so that when I actually did officially join the team, it was kind of cool because I, I, I had that kind of vibe and reputation, which was like, I'm not going to bullshit you, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm being mm -hmm. genuine. I genuinely love this game. You know, I love it. Uh, and uh, I'm a gamer myself. I'm a player of this game myself, you know? Yeah. I think that awesome. was kind of a big part of the success too. It's the fans yeah. enjoy kind of an authenticity if, to it. If I like try to Twitch stream or YouTube, like game stuff, like there's already enough negativity on the planet. PJ and I just played a game last <laughs> night and I had a blast. But still, if like one little janky thing goes wrong, and I don't mean anything towards the Passion Project developers or anything like that, but if it's like weirding me out and I can't quite get it, <laughs> I turn into like a filthy sailor mouth over there in the corner trying to figure it yeah. out. Like, you know, PJ's by himself defending from hordes yeah. of this, that, and the other, and I'm sitting there like, this thing doesn't work. I can't do this the way I was just working. Yeah. Mother, mother effort, effort, you know, I'm just so, <laughs> yeah. like, man, it doesn't need any more of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's like, maybe it's because it's VR or something like that, or maybe it's just because it is a physics game. So when bugs happen in Blade and Sorcery, generally speaking, they can be funny, you know, like, you know, yeah. the guy gets stuck in a, I don't know, a <laughs> cart, and then the cart starts spinning and it shoots yep. up the wall or something <laughs> like that. It's like, so you kind of, you know, you're a little bit more forgiven, but I could see mm -hmm. how, like, if I was playing a flat game, probably would be, would be more bothered by bugs. So <laughs> Yeah, just depending on, but it's like, for me, it was yeah. like, I do this, and it worked. I do this, and I can't grab it the right way, and the gun stops shooting. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, can't do this, and then I get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so we have yeah. one minute. Is there anything okay. that you want to oh. share or didn't get to talk about that you really wanted to touch on? Or Let me see. I mean, I'm just, I was just happy to, to have an old chat. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess the status at the moment. Uh, so U10 had just launched. Uh, with PC, uh, working on a patch, there, there's kind of like one serious bug in the PC right now that that is being worked on. Uh, like uh, some users are having an issue with with their headset. I like one eye not 
working. Mm -hmm. So I feel so bad for those guys because that is a that's the kind of bug that's not fun. <laughs> like you know, that's like yeah. I can't play the game bad. So uh, <laughs> that's been working on. It's coming soon. Uh, Nomad is due for a patch. I think Monday. Uh, nice. uh, for a general bug fix patch, there is two super annoying issues with Nomad uh, since launch. Uh, but there were two issues out of our hands. One was um, if people were using the Oculus multi-account feature, which I didn't even know that was a thing, but it, but apparently yeah. it is a thing, and uh, it's causing conflict. The game won't load. And it's literally mm -hmm. an Oculus problem that we have no control over. So Oculus are working on that at the moment, but it sucks because, you know, I'm talking to those people with that problem. I'm like, so sorry. I wish I could tell you exactly when it'll be fixed. But, but hopefully that'll be fixed soon. And then the other Nomad thing was... Uh, your game, if your headset's not up to date, you'll have an issue too. So uh, again, that's just something. Hopefully, players uh, find the answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Still, yeah. for for what, again, what getting that onto the quest like that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, and good. like we're, we're we're really holding out hope here uh, for like uh, you know ASW. You know, it's on the quest. It's supposed to be just this crazy good performance piece. So we're you know sitting over here thinking have that <laughs> you know I mean? like so we're really <laughs> hoping it works out but uh we we have some tech issues that's not super easy to implement so Gander. that's underway at the moment but we're really hoping uh that works out because i'm so nice you know the quest <laughs> users just got this big boost of uh, frames so <laughs> other than that um awesome. that's about it i think nice you guys still hear me right even though i'm freaking out yep. okay. that's right yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're, we're looking yeah. I, I was looking over there and I saw your your camera head <laughs> I was like what the hell <laughs> I'm, sorry. Uh, I'm not gonna this is the quest one I think it's having a rough time tonight <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> so, not gonna go install Blade and Sorcery Nomad on that maybe yeah <laughs> bring the PC yeah. version but well man we thank you so much for coming and talking it's been awesome as you can see, it's easy to just keep going, but we'll stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love the PC game. I've played the uh, I've played No Man a couple times. Not enough that I want to, um, but I haven't had any issue. I love it. Like the dungeon Brilliant. update is awesome. I love sneaking through and Brilliant. getting up the hijinks. <laughs> so. Brilliant. By the way, there's some uh, some secret stuff coming that we've added in for the stealth aspect of the game, nice. which was not even an aspect of the game. But yeah. it's the whole classic thing where it's like the fan, if the fans are saying something, it's like, well, let's just do it. <laughs> you know, like it's, so we have some cool stuff coming uh, for stealth. Awesome. I love stealth. So that's good to hear. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm not sure where you were there. <laughs> <laughs> Limbo. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, thanks very much. It was, it was lovely chatting. Yeah. yeah. I Next wish you guys ever. all the best. I hope. The bugs go away and everything you want to add comes <laughs> into play. And I've been digging the updates. So, <laughs> brilliant. Thanks very much. Cool. That's all. <laughs> Hope you get some sleep. Yeah. Hey, thanks a million. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Cheers. This was brilliant. Uh, that flew in. That really flew in. Yeah, it, it does. Fun. Yeah. It's always interesting on a podcast. Like it takes a half hour to kind of warm up and like, yeah, okay, we could talk, and then it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the way you you did this. This is cool. Yeah, fun, fun oh, place to uh, be. What's um, what's like your relationship with uh, the Spatial Ape guys? Uh we're just. Uh, they said, "Hey, we like your podcast. Do you want to do it in our space and be in VR?" And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> so, oh, cool. So Ever do you since... have like little a per permanent little kind of setup here? Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, they're they're real nice. Uh, your man Jesse. Uh, so I was here a few months ago. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was I think it was that boot over there, and they had like a little blade and sorcery boot. Yep. And just chatting about the game and stuff like that, and it was super cool. It was like real unique. I was weirded out at first because you know everyone's like going and talking to each other, and it's like, you know, when you first log in, it's like, oh, I just. Talk to like a rando, you know, like, yep. <laughs> but but once the boot was set up and people were actually coming up to me, that was it was like really cool and like, uh, yeah. surreal actually. Just yeah, everyone in here just generally wants to talk to everyone, and yeah, it's always a good time. It's it's awesome, yeah. I, I, totally I, I missed just... your talk when your booth was in here, but I was in your booth playing around and stuff, 
<laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, it was it was like just a lot of like indie devs just like, hey, I'm making this game and like, you know, tell me about Blade and Sorcery. Like, how did that go? And and actually speaking of those like developers, you know, saying like, how how can I make money? You know, that was, yeah. this was one of the places I was saying that to people like, you know, like you just got to have an angle. You got to have something that's no one has, you know, and you just got to figure that out. And if you can't figure that out, then maybe the hard truth is it's you don't have a good thing to sell, you know. Yeah, it's hard to hear when you've worked in something for years, but yeah, it's kind of this is why you know this is why it's hard, you know. But <laughs> let's say like an author, your first million words are practice words, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's right. a lot of words to be writing to be like, you know yeah. what, that's kind of crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this is it. It's like if you make a game, you put two years in it, and it just doesn't have a cell factor. Well, maybe then that was your your, your training wheels, kind of. And mm-hmm. then maybe yep. your next one will be just grab some, part, you know, some of the cool stuff you put in there. Grab it and yeah. put it in a, the next game. Yeah, but it ain't easy. That's the you yeah. know, this is it. It ain't easy. <laughs> so. But anyway, lads, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off. I'm actually gonna run over here and have a look because I'm curious what that boot is. But then I'm gonna log off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but thanks a million for for doing this, and uh, oh, I anytime. look forward to checking out. Awesome. Have a great night. All righty. Yeah. See us. Thanks again. <laughs> He's scooting. <laughs> go on. You go. On. Well, everyone, that was the Baron from Blade and Sorcery. There'll be links in the show notes to the games and his contact and all that fun stuff. But definitely a, a good game on Quest. It runs, like, I'm still shocked. That I don't know how it works because it's insane. But check it out. It's, if these are all Quest 2 screenshots and that video that we're watching over there, it's like, holy crap. Uh, I don't think they are because these are from when he was here last. But. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> <clears throat> but, but it's still even like how are you gonna even <laughs> think to, to squeeze again i mentioned earlier that that castle town scene how you like they were right in the beginning be like that's not gonna work like well like that, I, he doesn't have to look that good either like you know, has, yeah <laughs> Did I just crash no okay no you're there but we'll get to do our sign off for the first time in a while so <laughs> Thanks everyone for hanging out, watching, and listening. Um, come back again. I'm PJ. I'm Wookie. And this was our VR verdict. <laughs> the camera. Ah, well, <laughs> <laughs>